This lecture looks at solo growth model. Uh, it's our fifth in the series. We're going to look at a change in the savings rate. Now this becomes a little complicated because we have to know if we are currently at the maximum consumption steady state or not and where we are. So uh, if you don't know how to do that, go back and look at the video on how to find the maximum consumption steady state, otherwise called the golden rule steady state. So in this world, we take our key equation and let's first think about it. Let's assume an increase in the rate of savings. An increase in the rate of savings means for every piece of GDP or income we get, we save more of it, which means two things. One, the savings goes into investment, so we are investing more of it. So investment will go up and sure enough, this piece goes up. So this rises. So if we were initially in steady state, which is here, right, where investment is just offsetting uh, our depreciation, now we're investing more than our depreciation, and so capital accumulation turns positive, and we begin to increase our capital stock. Graphically, this goes from here up to a higher savings rate, and we go to something like this. Over time, we've got additional investment above what is required to offset depreciation. So we begin accumulating capital and our capital stock slowly rises over time. That's fine if we want to look at how that happens over time. We would see our capital stock do this. We would start at this steady state and we would slowly rise to this new steady state. Since we know what capital does, we can feed that into the production function and we know exactly what output does. It would also start here at its old steady state and begin rising to a new steady state. Investment, we know what GDP does or production does, but don't forget it started with a jump in investment because this suddenly increased. It increased once like this, and then it followed the path of GDP. The question is what happens to consumption? The trick with consumption is that consumption is, in the case of investment, this went up and then this increased. So we know investment grows. In the case of consumption, when savings rate suddenly increases, consumption goes down. If you suddenly want to save more, you have to consume less out of the same income. So you give me $100, if I consume $90 and save 10, that's fine. But if you give me 100 and I suddenly want to double the amount I'm, I'm saving, I have to consume only 80 so I can save 20. So this goes down initially. We know that for sure. Consumption starts here and it's going to drop. That's for sure. We also know that after it drops, this continues and grows the way this does. So we know it's going to look either like this or it's going to look like this. Another option is it could grow um, back to where it was, okay? But the question is, do we grow consumption eventually to be more than it was originally? I mean, we have more GDP. Or did we save so much that our consumption drops and then never recovers to where it was because we're saving... We have more GDP, but we're saving a huge fraction of it. 
To answer that, we have to know whether we were initially at the maximum consumption steady state. If we are, were, then we're here. So if S naught was the max C, then the new savings rate takes us out to where consumption is worse off. If the initial savings rate was not, Maybe this is then consumption, steady state consumption was here, and now it's here, and we're in this. So where this would be the case where S naught was less than S. So it all depends on where you started. If the initial savings rate is below the maximum consumption savings rate, everything looks like this, the graph looks like that, and consumption drops and then grows beyond where it was. If, on the other hand, your savings rate was at or above, I would say greater than or equal to it, and now you increase, everything looks the same, but consumption drops and probably never and never recovers. As a policy matter, we try to avoid that case, although there may be good reasons you want to lower consumption.